Um, I want to talk about something that uh, relates to all of us. Uh, and our lives are kind of built around it. Uh, I want to talk about uh, blessing. And, um, you know, we don't, in our, in our normal, normal uh, if, if you're talking to a brother or sister, uh, like in an email or something, you might put blessings as, instead of uh, you know, thank you or sincerely or something. You might be say blessings or something like that. What's that? Or bless you. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that's in the world. Usually, that's the only time people get a blessing come out of their mouth is when somebody sneezes or something, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, they, they are related to what a blessing is about in a lot of different ways, and so I want to. I want to. Uh, Relate it to how God's desire is to get right in the middle of what motivates us in a lot of ways. Because when we think of blessing, uh, you know, right, at, right away we put some kind of religious connotation to it. But really what it is, it's, it's having a benefit, isn't it? Like it can be a, most of the time it's a financial benefit, isn't it? When you, even in the Old Testament, you relate it to... So, there's a, a prosperity, there's a wealth. And uh, that element of blessing can take a great focus in our life, and it does. And uh, especially in America, it can become an issue. It's, it, it's a, you know, a few weeks ago we talked about overcoming success. <laughs> Because success in itself and, and blessing in itself can actually become an obstacle in itself. It could be something that's hard to get over. But in America, just to be an American, I mean, people all over the world are wanting to come here just to get inside of our borders because just to be in America alone, you are already blessed. You are already blessed. You can go turn on some tap water and just drink some water and it's going to usually be good. Just that alone. That's, that's, that's good. But we have protection. We have, and, and, and really when it comes down to it, anybody can get a job. It's just whether you want to get a job or not, right? You can get on Craigslist. You can find something. And in America, we are blessed in a major way. So I want to talk about this this, this wealth that we have that is, is amazing. Anybody, anybody in America can become a millionaire. It's just whether they're going to take the blessing of being an American and do something with it, right? Everybody is blessed. It's what you're doing with your blessing that is so important. And God has already to be we just had communion, didn't we? We just remembered what Jesus did for us. And just in the memory of what Jesus did for us, there's a blessing. There's an amazing blessing. And what are we doing with our blessing? Okay? So I want to I just go through some verses as quickly as we can. Draw some stuff out. I want to be affected by the presence of God, by his word, by something that's very an integral part of who I am. How many want to be blessed? How many want to, <laughs> how many want to succeed in things? Amen? A lot of times, even when it comes to God, we just want God to just dump it on us. And, and, and there's a qualification. He's already blessed us, but what are we doing with what he's given us to be blessed with? And so let's look at Psalms first here. Psalm 33, 12. So if we're blessed as a nation, it's because of what? Our God is, is the Lord. Now, you could go across, you know, I, I heard there, there's some protester that was just filthing and foul in America, you know. <laughs> and if you, if you look at certain, if, 
certain aspects of America, and this isn't an American sermon this morning, but it's a good example, right? If you look at certain aspects of something, you can find a reason to curse anything. But it's where you're looking that you can begin to be blessed. And you can benefit from your blessing. So if we are blessed as a nation, I really believe it's because of God. And it might not be, you know, um, we're going to get to this, but there's a blessing that comes through somebody that has, has allowed themselves to receive and act on what God has done in their life that goes through generations. And people can be blessed and they had nothing to do with it. Right? And I believe that's what's happening in America. And uh, only, a, only a blessing that is valued is a blessing that's experienced. Because you have to do something with it. So our nation is a nation that is blessed because of God. And whether, you know, you might look, if, if you just look on the news, if you just look around you sometimes, even in your neighborhood, you can think, where are the Christians? But I'll tell you, it's, it's so much fun. We, we were down in, in, um, in Alabama, and we went out to eat somewhere, and you, I walked by a table, and this whole family had their hands joined, and the little boy was praying. And you know, there's, there's salt in America. Because, and this is why it's so important that, 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 that we tap into the blessing that is ours in God because it's not just about us. So we'll get to this. It's about what goes through us. When you are blessed, it's going to be a conduit for blessing. And you will become a blessing yourself, not just something you've received. Okay. Deuteronomy eight seventeen. What's Deuteronomy? That's where uh, the people have come out of Egypt, what they, how, how blessed were they to not no longer be slaves? That was a blessing, wasn't it? But what did they do with their blessing? They whined and they complained, didn't they? They didn't see it for what it was. But it was there that they actually got a law. They got a, a principle. They got a, and this is the thing that, 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 is, that is very powerful you know, sometimes I've wondered, how do we bless God? There's something that comes out of the mouth in a declaration that puts in place a provision for blessing. And what God did in the law, and some of it, you know, we can go back and we can say, that just sounds like a bunch of scary stuff to me. But what God was wanting to do was through his word, through his law, through what he declared, make a way for the, his children to be blessed. In great abundance. He said, you let me be your God, you'll find out what blessing is. Because the blessing of God goes over and above what we can come up with ourselves. How many have had a job you just did not really care for that much? <laughs> and you did it, and you might have made some decent money, but it was not fun making it. Right? <laughs> so in Deuteronomy, though, it's, it's where... where uh, God is speaking to his people and he's saying, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. What did it say there? It said, he gives you the ability to produce wealth doesn't necessarily just dump it in your lap. He tells you how to do it, right? <laughs> so, anybody remember my story from last week, my fishing story? Um, and this is partly what inspired me on this. There's a blessing from God that everything you labor for yourself with great difficulty, it's going to come hard that way. But God is a suddenly God that will cause things to take place. It'll be something you get involved with yourself because he doesn't just bless you. And, and this is the problem in America. A lot of people just want stuff to be given to them. That's not blessing. If you're not doing something to produce it, it's not blessing. Because as humans, what we get our greatest gratification of is a reward, not just a gift. 
It needs to be a reward of what we've earned, right? Um, but this is God's attitude. He says, what, what I want to do is way beyond what you think you want. <laughs> okay? He says, now I took, off the, I took off the beginning part of this that talks about tithe just because sometimes we get caught up on that. And I want to just look at the attitude of God towards us. He says, see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. This is, this is the God that we're talking about. When it comes to blessing, he's saying, you don't even have any idea what the potential is of the blessing of God is that we have in Christ. And this is where God help us to get hooked up with that. We just made a confession, didn't we, over our offering. We said something about God's heart towards us that he wants to get involved. Why do we give it all? Why does he require tithe of us? He says, please let me get involved. And until you're trusting me with your finances, I can't get involved. I'm not your God. You're trusting in something else. If you're saying, I can't let go of this, that means that your finances and your blessing are your responsibility, not me, mine. But as soon as you let it go, now God gets involved. And now his blessing is, is given an opportunity. Okay? See if I know I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, we're going to come back to that last three words in a little bit, though, because I think there's a part that we have to play in the preparation for a blessing for it to be received and, and, and uh, put to use in our life. Genesis 26, 12 also says, I, Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold. Because why? The Lord blessed him. And this is, this is the cool thing about it. It's like you don't even have to be doing everything. You know, when this happened, it was right after, remember Isaac was living, uh, I think it was Abimelech. I think he was among the, um, the Philistines, right? And his wife was so pretty that he was afraid that they were going, going to kill him to get his wife. So he said, she's my sister. He did like his dad, right? He did just like his dad. And then Abimelech looked out the window and saw him caressing his sister. And he said, something's wrong. This is not your sister, right? This is after that. This is right after that, after he's being a, a goofball. God doesn't care. He says, you get involved with me and I'm going to bless you. And you know why he's actually blessing him? He says, I'm blessing you because of your father. And this is part of what I want to get to is... The blessing of Abraham is something that we are tapping into right now, just like Isaac. God wants to bless us. He wants to do things that are over and above. A hundredfold, that sounds like a lot, right? But we have to get involved a little bit. And so um, uh, let's look at one more here before I, I dive into some of this other stuff. Pro Proverbs 10, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. Without painful toil for it. Now, that would almost sound like you don't have to work for it. It's just, you just sign up for welfare, right? <laughs> but I want to look at what, the, what I, I believe this means because we see some things to the contrary. In fact, if you go back to uh, Malachi, he said, you won't have room to what? Store it. You won't have room to store it. Who's storing it? Who's doing something with the blessing? You are. <laughs> when the blessing comes, what are you doing with it? Are you ready? Do you have a place to store it? Are you, is it something that you are anticipating, you're in faith for? Because I believe sometimes God has an opportunity for blessing and he doesn't have our ear in the first place. And we're not ready for it. 
We don't have room to store it. It does no good to have a blessing if you don't have room for it. What happens to a harvest if you don't have a place to put it? It gets dried out. It gets soaked in the rain. Because you didn't see it for the blessing that it was. And you weren't ready. So, it would seem like with the blessing of the Lord, you just don't do anything. You lay back and have some tea. But, so, in John, remember the story about how, how uh, Jesus comes up to the shore and they've been fishing all night long. And this is where, again, that reminded me. I started to tell you my, retell you my story of fishing. We were down in Alabama on, the, on, on a pier that went out from our house. And I'll tell it real quickly here. But we'd been fishing all night, didn't cast, find, uh, catch any fish. And Jesus showed up on the shore and told Luke to, no, that's not quite how it went. But Luke had a little holy net. I mean, it wasn't a, uh, that this is not religiously holy. It had a great big hole in it. And, and, it, and it, it was just a little one, and he tossed it out there and caught eight fish, pretty big size fish. And Larry tells me they weren't eating ones, but we ate them anyway. And, and, <laughs> and Luke said this after he got, he said, you know what? This is going to happen in my life too. He said, I've been working so hard for things to happen, and things are just going to take place because it's God. You know, where you're not, you're not doing everything you know to do and putting the right bait on, doing everything else. And it's not, it doesn't mean that we don't do any of these things, but God's going to come along. And when it's God's blessing, it's going to be something beyond what we can do and more than we can contain. Yeah. Amen? We got those fish up on that deck and it was like, I hope they don't flop off because, you know, we had to grab them real quick and put them in a bucket and everything. You have to make way. <laughs> I said he caught those fish. He caught eight fish. Did we get that? In a holy net. Yeah. And it was like one or two in the morning. And here's the point. I had to clean all those fish. And I'm not a real good cleaner. Larry would have been done in 10 minutes. Took me an hour at least. (laughs) You know, you got to saw off their head because the not, <laughs> knife isn't sharp enough, you know. And <laughs> scrape all this, all this. Was that a blessing or what? <laughs> Can you see where I'm going with this a little bit? Is with the blessing is responsibility, but for the person that is blessed by it, it's not work. And that's why it's not, it's not a toil that you dis- despise. A fisherman doesn't despise the work after he catches the catch. Because it's a blessing to him. It's like where I grew up. <laughs> you go out on a windy day and you smell money. But it also smells like something you get on your foot when you step in it. Right? Because to farmers, manure smells like money. And scooping it. It's not toil that you despise. It's part of being rich. Does this make sense? So it helps me to to resolve what is said in Proverbs, that the blessing of the Lord brings wealth, but it doesn't bring painful toil with it. It's it's not going to bring something that you despise or that's going to hurt you, right? It's not a slavery. It's a blessing, but there's going to be some work. Right? And sometimes we're looking for God to bless us and we're, and we're not ready to go to work with what it is or we can't even see it for what it is because our hearts haven't been lined up with his heart. We get so, that's why we got to be careful getting, getting sucked into things in the world. What, what, are we, what are our passions being drawn into? Because maybe God wants something much better than that. And we're going to have to work for it a little bit. Okay, so here's the story. And, and Jesus is coming up on the fishermen after they've fished all night long. And he said, throw your net on the, on the right side of the boat. Don't you like it when you're doing something that you know how to do and somebody else comes along and tells you to do it a little bit differently? Does, has that ever just like, does that ever bother you? It's like, I'm already doing it. I've been doing it all night. Can you just leave me alone here? 
these are fishermen. They can read the weather. They know where to put this and where to put that. And Jesus comes along. I don't know if he's fished a day in his life. He's a carpenter, right? What's a carpenter doing telling a fisherman what to do? But you know what? They've seen him. They've seen him speak to things and they change. They've seen him speak to, this, to the storm. Amen? They said, man, if he tells me to do something. Did you feel an anointing just now? <laughs> I wonder if they felt an anointing. They said, wow, I'm going to respond. I'm going to respond to that. They were in a position and they were ready. Their nets were ready. <laughs> they hadn't caught anything yet. But... And you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. You think, the blessing. If Jesus would have really, if this really would have been a, a, a God blessing, Jesus would have just spoke to the fish and they would have all jumped out of the water and cleaned themselves. See what I mean? <laughs> oh, this is Travis' story. <laughs> what happened? And let's go to the next slide because sometimes we don't go down to this far, but Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. What did they do? Did they just throw them all back? They said, this is throwback night. They didn't. What did they do with every single fish that they caught? in the hall, what did they do? They pulled them in. Jesus didn't say, throw them all back just because we know that it's, I'm the God. Now you know that I am more than enough. Now just throw them. No, he said, do something with them so that they're a blessing. Amen? And what did they have to do now? They had a hundred. They had more than eight fish. And it had been all night long. Does this sound like a blessing? It's almost sounding like a curse, isn't it? It's a curse for me. This would be a curse for me. I'm not a fisherman. But if it's a blessing from God, and it's what you're doing, and God's giving you to do, and he said, what did he, how did he bless them? He just told them what to do, didn't he? He didn't give them the fish. He, he said, no, I'm telling you what to do. Amen? And now, what do you got? You have to do it. You don't, you don't say back, no, I've been doing this all night. It's not working. How often is there that element that maybe we say, no, I, I'm not going to do that because I've already done it, and it doesn't work. And God's saying, hello, this isn't about you. This isn't about what you've tried. This is about what I'm telling you to do. Amen? <laughs> So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat <laughs> and dragged the net ashore. This implies that he, had, he thought it was over. The blessing wasn't over until the work was done. <laughs> it was full of large fish. It, it didn't say it was a bunch of little uh, sunfish. It wasn't a bunch of little sunfish or minnows. It says they were large fish, 153. They counted them. Man, I don't know if I, I could have counted. You know, they're flopping all around. But when you're a fisherman, you value every single one of them, don't you? Every one counts. When it comes to the blessing of God in our life, we begin to count our blessings. We begin to name them. We, we, we begin to account for them because what's taken place when we do that, we've made a way. When God blesses, it's, it's more than we can take. What I thought was really cool on this too, it says, but even so many, the net was not, even with so many, the net was not torn. God's going to allow your preparations to be enough, to be sufficient, to be unbroken, our holy net still caught fish. <laughs> Amen? All right, let's go to the next one. 
So this is how it relates. How many know the story about Jacob? Are, are we good this morning? Are you still? Can, do we need to do some up downs or or pinch each other's or anything? Uh, remember what happened with with uh, with Jacob? Jacob was an ordinary guy. He wasn't supposed to get any blessing, was he? He was the second dude out of the chute, and he was not supposed to. <laughs> he was not supposed to get a blessing because he came after his brother. He actually hung onto his brother's heel, right? And <laughs> He, he, he was not supposed to, but he was, he was insistent upon a blessing because he saw the value in it and he made a way to get it. Right? In fact, his mother got involved. She was an ornery mom, but she liked Jacob better. And uh, I, don't know what ha- I don't know what it was about Esau. Maybe he stunk. I don't know. He probably stunk. <laughs> but... Remember what happened? She, she connived with him to get, first of all, to get the birthright. But then there's something about a blessing. There's something about a blessing that makes way for an inheritance, for something that goes beyond even you, right? And so what she contrived with him to... To get a blessing, remember they put the fur on him and, and, he, and he still had his little squeaky voice and, and, and remember his, he says, that does not sound like Jacob. He says, yeah, but feel me and smell me. They even put scent on him so he would stink. <laughs> and and uh, Jacob, in the process of doing that, it says there, he says, but what happens, this could turn into a curse rather, a, rather than a blessing. He understood this process of, of curse and blessing. And he said, I need what, what my father's going to speak over me in, in order to become what I'm going to become. We need what God has spoken over us in order to become what we're going to become. But it has to be something that we go after and we take hold of and we wrestle an angel over, you know. But, so what happened when he got that blessing, though? Did it look like a blessing? Immediately, it looked like a curse. Now my brother's going to kill me. Right? And what do I have to do? I have to run away. And I have to go to my uncle's part of the country. Right? Far away. And now I got a blessing. I got a birthright. What does it look like? 14 years of work, (laughs) right? But he never lost the blessing, did he? No, the blessing was his. But he was going to do something that would make it become something that was real. And it was up to him, wasn't it? So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. And I like this. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. (laughs) I don't know. Did that help at all? (laughs) Not really. (laughs) There's a saying that if you can... If you can do what you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. That doesn't mean you're not doing something. It doesn't mean you're not working. It's just to you, it's not work. So the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and it doesn't add any of that kind of sorrow. Because what God wants to do is to tell you what to do (laughs) that is connected to who you are he doesn't want you to become some. He doesn't want you. He doesn't want your shape to be shoved into another shape. <laughs> he wants your shape to fit right into the part of the body that's yours to fit, but not to not do anything. No, you're blessed as you're doing what you've made, been made to do, so that everything you're doing is no longer work. It's the blessing of God, and God's able to to over power you with a blessing that you can't contain. Amen? Oh, give give me another one, Ryan. 
I'll try not to use a southern accent. Matthew 25. For whoever has will be given more. And they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. This sounds like Yoda or something, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, what? How can you have and not have at the same time? Well, you can be an American, have and not have. Because you have, but your perception of not having will totally disable what you do have. Right? What is, this is after the parable, right, of the, of, the, of the man that he gives five bags of, of money to. And the guy that has the five bags, he says, well, I got five bags. I better do something with it. The guy that has three bags says, well, I've got three bags. I better do something with it. The guy that has one bag, he says, one bag, that's nothing. I'm just going to hang on to it. You know what? God's given us, it might look like one bag but to the one that sees what they have is a blessing. Amen? Oh, why do we sing songs of being blessed by God? Why do we exalt what he's done for us? Why do we <laughs> bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits and go on and on and on? Why is it so important to go on and on and on? about Not to just let somebody else do it and we say, yeah, I agree. No, it comes from us. What has God done for us? Instead of bellyaching about what we're going through, start to proclaim what God has already given us. Amen? Otherwise, what he's already given us, it's a blessing we have, but it's not going to be ours because we didn't even see it as such. And we didn't. Peter had to get back in the boat to go take care of the blessing. Amen? We're going to have to take care of the blessing that is ours in Christ. Why do we remember and take communion so that we'll value it? Amen? Amen? And we'll recognize, because I'll tell you what, we, get so, we can get so consumed with what's going on in our body, what's going on in our bank account, what's going on in our family, some kind of strife that's going on in our life, something that's on Facebook. Right? We can get so consumed by those things that we have a blessing that's more than we can contain, and we don't even have it because we don't have it. Right? Eat your heart out, Yoda. All right. All right, give me another slide. We got to. This, this is good, though, isn't it? Yes. This is a good. Man, we've had a good service today. Genesis 12, 2. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'm going to go back to America just a little bit more, but we can relate it to being in the body of Christ also. He's talking to Abraham, isn't he? He's talking to a man. And he's declaring that you are going to be a great nation. I believe God spoke to our forefathers in America. Amen? I believe this. I mean, there's, again, there's things that we need to resolve in America. We need to fix this or fix that. And thank, goodness we, thank goodness we can. We can vote. We can do what needs to be done. We can make it right. We can pr pray for our leaders. We can, you know, we can do what needs to be done. But what he spoke to Abraham, he says, I'm going to make you a nation. That means people that are going to be a part of, of, of his heritage, his sons and daughters, they are blessed because of him. It's, it's, it's a very similar thing that God wants to do through us. There's a heritage that we can have. It's beyond us. It's our family. But, but it, you know, there's, there's statistics. I, I, I'm not real familiar with them, but I know that we touch, you, we touch people that, that, that we influence. Everybody that, that we come in contact, we, we have an, an ability. And, th and then it can touch more and more people. And God's saying, through you, and I know he's speaking to Abraham here, but God wants to do great things inside of us. Amen? 
and I will bless you. It will be God that's blessing you. God that's making you to prosper. God that's making you to do these things. If this isn't just for everybody. It's the ones that by faith say that's mine. Amen? That see what they have in Christ is a treasure. And they're going to do something with it. They're going to clean the fish. They're going to they're gonna put the, the, the grain in the silo. They're going to take care of it. Right? I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Let's go to the next one. So Deuteronomy 30. So he, he puts it in our lap after everything that God has, has proclaimed. Actually, if you go through these, these chapters, I mean, it, it can be, it, it's pretty extensive. God says, here's all the blessings. <laughs> You're going to have everything you need. All your children are going to be taken care of. You're going to be protected. What kind of blessings do we want, do we need in our life? God says, this is how it goes. When I'm your God, now you can, you can say, well, that was just a bunch of law. But in Christ, what did, what did Jesus come to do? He came to fulfill the law to where God can be our God and not just a law. Amen? So we can be connected to him by our heart. He's our God. That's the part we take. <laughs> Amen? God's passionate about this. He doesn't want us to just come in here and whole hum in his presence. He sent Jesus. He paid the huge price so that we can be blessed beyond what we can contain. But the more we do that, the more we prepare for it, the more, more we, we make a storehouse, the more we, we anticipate and by faith take the promises that we have for blessing and we put them in our mouth and we say they're mine. Amen? And we, like a farmer, begin to anticipate it. Water it. Amen? I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Let's go to the next one. And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know what God gets to in the middle of this? He says, you know what? You get so consumed with the wealth that you want, that your flesh desires, God, see, God saves the best part for last. He said, you get me. In the midst of any belly aching for a want for blessing, just lay hold upon the treasure you've been given in the presence of God. Amen? He said, I'm going to be your father. For the Lord is your life. Is the Lord your life? Is he really your life? Now, that's, uh, again, it's, it's, like, it's like that uh, who has will be given more and who doesn't have, even what they have will be taken. The Lord is your life, but him being your life is going to be something that you have to value and you have to care for. Amen? <laughs> but to God, this is, this is way, you know, the stuff that he'll, he'll pour out on upon us. It's nothing to him. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All the wealth that's ever been, I mean, it's just, it's pittance to him. But what he says, way more than that stuff is me. I'm your God. I'm your life. Amen? Yes. So in, in the midst of, of even talking about blessing and the blessings of God, man, let's make God the blessing. Amen? Amen? So that when we, we, we get into a time of worship where we're, we're talking about the presence of, of, of God, man, we get to our, don't take me away from here. 
let me, let me hang out of here a little bit longer because I, I, if this is really my life, I'm going to have to value it more because I'll tell you what, we can, not, not, to, not to do this too much, but I went fishing with Buddy and, and uh, McKenna and Travis on Friday and you know what, we can stand out there in the water for four or five hours and just really enjoy catching sunfish, you know. And that's, that's okay. It's good. But how much more? And, and, I've, and we value that. And, and you know, I, now I got online and found out I can buy some flies and, uh, and a new, you know, you start, that's what McKenna said. The thing about these kind of things is you just spend more and more money. <laughs> she, she was making note of that. Because now you got to go fish over here and you got to go fish over there and, and you got to go to Alaska and you got to go to the Gulf and you got to catch tuna and you got to, and, 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 and you know what? That's, that's not, that's, I believe that's part of the blessing of God. But how do we, how do we savor his presence? You know, how, how, how natural is that? How, how, how much is it something that, that, that he is our blessing? Amen? Because I believe, and, and, and it might be that, that they go together. We can take God into the river with us or, you know. But it needs to be not something where we compartmentalize our life and say, this is the part that I really like. Now I have to go to church. You know what I mean? No, no, God is my life. And because he's my life, I can't wait to go. to. That's the way David was, right? He said, I can't wait to get to where his praises are going up because that's, that's, that's me, but that's me on steroids. Right? Because it's not just me alone. It's me together with a body that loves God. And, and, and when we praise together, it's so much more. Right? Because God is our life. But until he's saved just as much as fishing or shopping or Starbucking or Facebooking or, you know, things that we can do for long periods of time? Watching a movie? You know, it's, it's amazing how, how much somebody can sit through a movie, a three-hour movie, not even get up to go potty. You know, in fact, if they need to go potty, they resist going potty because they don't want to miss anything because they are, their life for that three hours is the movie, right? Is this too harsh? I think, I think we, if God really is our God, we need to really be honest. Do we really savor him? Do, can we really find a time in our life where, we, I mean, we're almost at two hours now, and, I, and I'm almost apologizing. You know what I mean? <laughs> is this too much? Because the blessings of the Lord... They make you rich in what way? They'll, they'll make you rich financially, but they'll make you rich as a person. And the, the savoring of the, of the presence of God and the treasure of his presence, it'll make, it'll make a, a, the person God has made you to be only occurs during those moments. Amen? And it might be that when you're savoring his presence, he's going to tell you to fish on the other side of the stream. <laughs> He's going to tell you what to do that's going to cause a blessing. Amen? Oh, God, that we might acknowledge you in every moment. That you might really be our life. God says, man, if they can only get this. I'm giving it to you. I'm putting before you life, death, blessing, cursing. Now it's just up to you. You have the blessing. What are you going to do with it? Right? I believe I've got one more here. This is really good, though, isn't it? Man, I want the blessings of God in my life. So here he's greeting the Ephesians, and he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, when, who is planning on blessing us in the heavenly realms when we get to heaven, and in every monetary way in Christ. What does it say? It says, he has blessed us. Right? 
I tell you what, there's a getting on the, on, the, on the other side of the blessing. Once you have a blessing, man, there's peace, isn't there? <laughs> when you realize that you're already made rich in Christ. Amen? Before it looks like in your bank account. When you're already rich in your soul. Right? What's, what's the scripture that says, I pray that you uh, may prosper and be in good health even as your soul already prospers, right? Because you've already been blessed in the heavenly realms. It's already yours in every spiritual blessing in Christ. Is that good? So how many are blessed today? I'm telling you, you already are. You're already blessed. My goodness, God, take, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. You know, we like to sing those songs, but what are we opening our eyes to? The blessing of God. Amen? Amen. And then we can't wait to tithe. We can't wait. Why? Because we see it as a value that is so much greater than what we can can hold on to ourselves. Amen? We can't wait to get together. We can't wait to, and what's taking place in that is we, the more we are blessed, the more God declares over us that I'm going to make a blessing out of you. Amen? The more we are, the more we receive that blessing, the more we make way for, the, don't you like the song we sing? We make way, we make room. Lord, let your spirit move. Have your way. What is God's way? It's blessing. He wants to pour out blessing more than we can contain. But where is he going to pour it out to? Ones that see the blessing and not the curse. We're not choosing the curse. Amen? We're going to walk before the Lord in righteousness. Amen? I'll tell you one of the biggest blessings that we have is he's made us right in Christ. And, and we're, we're going through something where we might be failing in our flesh. We might have sinned. We might have done something wrong. We go back and say, no, that's not me. I'm blessed with righteousness. I'm blessed with holiness. I can go boldly into the very presence of God. He's given his presence to me as a gift. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you've blessed us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And with every spiritual blessing. Father, we want to walk in the spirit. We want to, we want to walk in newness of life in you. We don't, we, we don't want to look at what you've given us in Christ and say, I'm just going to set that to the side because it's not really all that much. Lord, help us to see greater and greater value in what you've done for us in Christ so that when when we take communion, we're just overwhelmed. Everything else in our life just gets to be really small when we start considering the blessings that we have in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for those needs in our life, God, we know that God is able to make all grace abound so that in all things and in all times, we have more than what we need and we're able to give in to every good work. This is what you've called us into. It's an inheritance that we have that goes all the way back to Abraham, that we're part of the promise of God to Abraham. (laughs) God, help us to see it. Help us to identify with it, Father God. Help us to to walk in it. Because, God, you want to bless somebody through us. And we need to be caring for the blessing that you've given us so that it can be transferred through us, a financial blessing. God, you want, you want us to be rich, not just so that we consume it upon our lust, but, Father God, so that we can give into every good work.
in a great way so that we can make a difference in somebody's life that's really desperate for financial blessing, Father. That we're not looking for it to come from somewhere else. It's coming from the blessing that you've poured into our life. And we're able to give. Make a difference, Lord God. Hallelujah. Help us to be storers of your blessing, Father. Help, help us to be cleaners of fish. Help us to be carers for those things, Lord God, that, that you value highly and you give us to do. And help us to respond right away, Lord God, when you say go this way, go that way. Lord, we're anticipating, we value so highly what you tell us to do that we will respond, Father. Lord, I speak over this body that we are a prosperous body. Lord, that you have things before us that need to be done for this community. You have, a, you have many that are in, in need of exactly what you've blessed us with, Lord God, and that you're going to give us ways going to show us how to cast on the other side, how to, how to go this way, how to go that way, Father God. And, and you're going to do so as we're valuing when we're living in and we're, we're producing and caring for the blessing that you give us, Father. It will be something that is contagious and desirous throughout this whole uh, community, Father God. And we'll may be able to, to, to represent you that we are your children. You are our God, and we actually live like it. We value you more than anything else in our lives, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that in each one of our hearts today there will be an adjustment made.